Are you trying to start a YouTube gaming channel? Do you want the whole world to see your fabulous face? Or do you just want to see how I make my Let's Play videos? Well, you're in luck, because today I'm going to show you how I make all of my gaming videos. In general, there's five things that you need in order to make a halfway decent video. For the microphone, I use a Blue Yeti. For my webcam, I use the Logitech C920. I also use Adobe Premiere Pro. To edit my videos, I use a free software called OBS, Open Broadcasting Software, to record my games. And finally, you need a computer. That's the beauty of YouTube is that you actually don't really need a lot of fancy stuff. Now, you're gonna need the right tools for the job. So at the very least, have the things that I listed or something equivalent. And the sky's the limit to how much money you could spend. But to get started, you really don't need anything fancy. That being said, let's get started. If you remember my YouTube setup video, this was actually what I have. I have a standing desk and I stack everything, uh, all the furniture on here. It was really literally less than a hundred bucks. But I do stack my microphone on top of books. Uh, later on, when you want to get a little bit more sophisticated, uh, I do have another microphone with a stand. This came a lot later after I had gotten a few thousand subscribers. Up here, I have my uh, webcam just on top of my monitor. I also have umbrella lights that shine in my face. You don't actually need the umbrella lights to start with. Uh, you can actually have just a regular household lamp that shines in your face, but you need to have something just so that people can see you. So the first thing that you want to download, OBS is free, it's obsproject.com. And from there, you install it. I did the classic, you can do the studio, but I'm gonna, what I'm gonna show you here on video is actually going to be the classic. And I'm assuming you're on Windows. Only dirty casuals use Macs. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. It's a lot harder to record things on uh, Apple, but you can. Uh, I'm just gonna show you Windows for right now. In settings, what you're going to do, uh, you wanna go to the encoding, you wanna use X264 as the codec, and you wanna use constant bitrate. What I use for streaming and what I use for recording are actually the exact same settings. And I use uh, CBR padding, I use uh, custom buffer size, and I buffer to 1800 kilobits. The audio encoding you, you do, I just do AAC, I do 44 kilohertz, and I do 128 bit rate. What you wanna do here, it's really important that you make things .mp4. If you leave it on the default settings as .flv, it actually makes it almost impossible for Premiere Pro to be able to actually handle it. So for video, I actually downscale usually to 1080, and I make it 60 frames a second. Uh, I do bilinear, that's fine. This is also the advanced settings that I have, you can check these out. These are a little bit more specific for me being on a 4K monitor and me playing games on that monitor. But what you wanna do here is I add a scene and let's say you wanna make it nuclear throne. And then what you wanna do here is you wanna add, uh, what I usually do is game capture. So the way that I do things is that I record a camera feed and then I record the games separately. And then in Premiere Pro, I mash them together. I'm gonna show you. So you wanna start the game first and I'm gonna show you. Uh, you do it from here. So for Nuclear Throne, you're gonna, you're gonna open the game. And once the game is open on OBS here, on here, uh, what you wanna do then is you wanna add a game capture. And then here you wanna select Nuclear Throne and then say, okay. And then make sure that that's checked. And once you have that checked, then you're going to see that you have the game here. I actually moved the game over uh, a little bit to the left. Under the edit scene button right here, I'm able to, to move everything off to the side and you can see that Nuclear Throne is layered underneath. So the other thing I wanna add is that I actually get the camera feed from the Logitech webcam software that actually comes with the camera itself. When you install the drivers on it, that's, uh, this is what you get to record. So when I go here, I actually make sure that I have Yeti stereo microphone selected. I don't want this web, the HD Pro webcam C920. And I wanna make sure that right sound and right light are unchecked and autofocus is also unchecked. Uh, I'm not gonna move in and out from the camera. So because of that, it doesn't need to change the focus. So sometimes you can get a blurry image if you do that. The other thing too, is that I make sure it's at 1080. If you want to record in 720, you can do that. But know that if you record in 1080, you can always downscale. If you are on 720, it's hard to upscale with the same kind of quality. So it just depends on how, how well your computer is. 
And then uh, right light is unchecked because if you have a check, I think it records at either 15 or 24 frames a second, is not 30 frames. And what you want is 30. So what I do here is that I'll record here first, and then I'll, I'll click the record video button, right? And this is what you get. So now I have my camera feed from the C920, and then I will record from OBS, and I'm gonna show you how I do that. Okay, so this is how we start recording with the camera feed, and this is all being recorded uh, as a screen capture. I start the webcam software first, and then I do my introduction. So we would do this. Hello everybody, my name is and welcome back to Nuclear Throne! Cut, and that is our intro. We're gonna keep recording, and then we're going to start OBS. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually turn the microphone on here in OBS and make sure that the game sounds are all the way up. So what we're going to say in the webcam software is we're going to say we're going to start OBS in 3, 2, 1, start it. So OBS now has been started and as you can see the microphone now here is popping because it's getting all of the microphone audio feed from there. So then what we say here is mic sync, mic sync, mic sync, cutting the mic in 3, 2, 1, and then we click that button. Now the mic has been cut and all of the audio is coming from the game itself. While the camera feed is running. So what we're gonna do now after the game is recorded, we're gonna drag all of those into Premiere. So now that we're in Premiere Pro, this is the Adobe Creative Cloud, the latest version that's here as of the recording of this video in 2016. I'm gonna go to new project and I'm gonna say uh, Nuke Throne and uh, we're gonna save it in our library's video uh, folder right here. And then what we're gonna do here is you're gonna notice uh, if you have the latest version, there are tabs up here that show how you should be doing the workflow. I actually haven't really changed the way that the windows appear outside of the default settings. This is something that you should see if you have the Creative Cloud version of Adobe. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually go to our videos library and we're gonna go over and we're gonna check out the video that we just recorded. In doing that, we're going to drag these folders in here, or these files, and then we're going to take into Logitech webcam software the last video that we recorded, which was video 320. So now that these have been dragged in here, what happens is in Premiere Pro, you have, when you drag it to your timeline here, we're still in the assembly tab right here. What's going on is that you have layers of different tracks right here. So you have track one, track two, track three. Track one would be at the very bottom, and then track two would be further up, and then track three is, is even closer to you, is how we would describe it. So this is always gonna appear in the back, and then when we drag video 320, which is the webcam feed, we're going to put it right here, and we're gonna notice that, hey, I look kinda big. I look sexy. And what we're going to see here is that this is on the outside. So when we go over to the effects tab, which is going to be how we're going to change the size of this, I'm going to go to the motion part right here and it's going to change the scale. So I can make this big or small. And when we go into the part of the timeline where the video clips overlap, you're going to find that the nuclear throne video is actually behind. So as, as I say, we're layering as it gets closer to you, the higher the number, the track. So that being said, now that I have this, uh, what I need to do is when you go to the effects tab, every single video clip is going to have emotion, opacity, and time remapping. And what that means is that every single video has some kind of standard position and size as re relative to the sequence. And by sequence, I mean what appears in the timeline. So what you do here is that I, I made the camera feed a lot smaller and when you click motion, it's going to have this little outline over here and then we can click and drag it over this way. So what I typically do for Nuclear Throne is that I'll drag it over to the side. Actually, I don't like dragging it. Uh, I'll change the numbers on here. So this is the X position and then the other one is the Y position. So the Y position is usually three, uh, 360, not 630. And then I'm gonna move it over so that it just about overlaps. Just because the game isn't in uh, 16 by nine format, it's in four by three. So that's why I can get away with doing this. Now when it comes to this clip, I'll move it over just a little bit. And then if you want to crop it, 
These are all the effects in this panel that you can use in Premiere Pro. I, it goes into video effects, transform, and crop. And then you drag it to the actual video clip. So I want to drag it over uh, to the video feed, not the actual game video. And then from here, I would use uh, I would use a left crop and then cut out a little square and then I can cut from the top and just drag and drop. So this is the video feed of me in the game. Now, the other thing too is the reason that I said mic sync, mic sync, mic sync was from here, I would say if you play the clip, you're gonna hear. We're gonna start OBS. And we're gonna yes. click the play button right here. Two, one. Okay, so the reason I counted down in three, two, one, and typically your video clip's not gonna have this much uh, leading edge in it. I say three, two, one as a point where that's where we're gonna drag the video clip, right? So if we play right here, and if you press spacebar, it plays. OBS in three, two, two one. Okay, so now that we know when it started, we can drag it right around here, and we can see that some of the audio waveforms are going to overlap. There is a little lag from when you press record and when that file actually begins recording. So the way you're gonna notice that there's gonna be a little offset. Start. So okay. But you're gonna see that there are definitely some similarities here in the waveforms. So we're gonna zoom in with the plus button and we're gonna see, oh, okay, this looks exactly the same. And then we sync it up. If you zoom in further with the plus button, you're gonna have the most control. So even if I'm off by maybe one frame, this is going to be the audio synced almost perfectly, which you will hear now. So OBS now has been started, and as you can see, the microphone now here... And now you notice that the audio signal is a little less intense not having two of the same audio signal. But the reason that you have the same audio signal is so that you can line up the two videos together. Now, to edit the videos is actually pretty easy. The first thing that you want to do is you want to cut. So typically, I cut all of the spaces where I'm not really saying much. The most basic editing is when you're here at the edit tab and you have everything lined up as you wish. The one thing I do here is I always trim the beginning. So usually your video feed is gonna be the longer video. I press V on the keyboard and then I drag it over and then it snaps over. I select both of them with shift click and then I move them over to the front of the timeline. So now, as we go here, we'll see that this is the actual video in sync. As we are here on the timeline and you have everything lined up, the first thing that I do is cut. You can add in all of the extra special things later if you want. If I press J, the video goes backwards. Right? And if you press it again, it goes faster. A lot faster. And then if you press L, coming from the you can pr you can play at multiple speeds when I find a spot that I want to cut the very beginning of it I press the I button and you can see on the screen here that it now has everything highlighted after this I section and then I'll press uh, L to advance forward and then I'll find a spot that I want to cut so say Say I want to cut right here before I say anything. I'll press the O button to denote out. And then I press the apostrophe key to ripple cut that entire part out. So now I went from this part to cutting right here. And in some of my videos, there might be more than two or 300 cuts, depending on how long it is. That's going to be the very first part. Then in the effects tab, if you want to import pictures here, I can give you a quick example here. I have the MLG pack, which I have a link in the description below. And in here, you might notice that there's uh, one of those songs called Sad Melody. And from here, uh, I'm in this window right now. You can press J, K, and L to play any of the files in a video. And if I press L, I know that that's where I want to start to cut. So I can press I. To, to denote in as it's playing and then I find the spot that I want to cut I'll say O oh. and here in this part when you want to sub clip things I press control U and then you make a sub clip so this would be sad violin and from here now we have our sub clip 
Now, if you want to put use the audio on here, which is the most common, what we're going to do is you can just check out the waveform here, but you can actually just drag from this little section here and then make it into the timeline. So when I start playing around that section, you're gonna hear that song. And those are all the effects that you can add in later. When you are finished with a video, I press Control M on Premiere Pro, and then that pulls up how I wanna render it. So typically I'll go down here, I'll go to the entire sequence. I'll name it uh, Nuclear Throne. And then I'm gonna save it. And then you can go ahead and cue it, which means that you send it to the media encoder, and then you can continue working in Premiere Pro. And that's how I make my YouTube videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. I hope you did. Leave me a comment if you got any questions. Subscribe today if you'd like to see more. Weekends with Bernie is probably the best way for me to connect with everybody. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Or most importantly, do you want to get healthy and feel better every single day of your life? Well, you're in luck, because today I have a story on how I lost 60 pounds in 16 weeks.